Hi, good afternoon. This is Laylee Long Soldier, and I'm here with Joy Harjo as part of the Chicago Humanities Festival. Um, all digital events have captioning, which can be controlled through YouTube. Uh, just another note that this program is presented in partnership with the Pro Poetry Foundation and Native American Support Program at the University of Illinois, Chicago. Uh, so we're so grateful to the festival for inviting us uh, to be here today uh, to discuss um, Joy Harjo's new anthology. Well, I should say it, the anthology she has just edited, uh, Living Nations, Living Words. And it is such an honor to be with you, Joy. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for inviting me to be a part of this. Um, and I should note, I'm sure most people know, but Joy is, Joy Harjo is our 23rd uh, U.S. Poet Laureate. So it is really an honor to be here. And also, uh, I think, Joy, you are the first Poet Laureate to be, to serve a third term. Is that correct? The second. Uh, Robert Pinsky was the first. For a bike, there was a bicentennial, bicentennial was going on. Uh -huh. So I'm the second. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. Well, we are here. Enjoy. This is going to have to be a loose conversation because I'm not the best with like outlining specific, specific questions. But I do, I think there's a lot to discuss with the anthology um, that is coming out. And if you don't mind, I'm, I would like to quote you to begin our conversation, um, quote you from the intro introduction to the anthology. Um, there's a passage there that was so meaningful to me. And give me one second. Yes, we're working from proofs right now. The book is due out Right. Mar May, May 4th is the that's question. right. And mm -hmm. so, yes. And so you were kind enough to share a, a proof of that. And so I hope it's OK that I do quote you from one uh, one paragraph of the introduction, which I, I thought was so powerful. And you wrote, when I started my term as the 23rd U.S. Poet Laureate, I immediately began considering a sig signature project. As the first Native Nations Poet Laureate, I was aware that indigenous peoples of our country are often invisible or are not seen as human, or we are known from false images and narratives carried over from the vitriol of New England, Puritan, Cotton Mather, and others who imagined us as demonic heathens not capable of civilized and ordered thought and action. You will rarely find us in the cultural storytelling of America, and we are nearly non-existent in the American book of poetry. For my project, I conceived the idea of mapping the US based on the poetry of native nations poets. Um, and so I'll, maybe I'll end there. Yes. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. No, yeah. Go ahead. You go. <laughs> yeah. I was when I was first when it was announced I was poet laureate. There were a lot. You know, the first question was, "It's like, well, what is your project?" And it's like, wait a minute. It was just announced, and I have all these ideas involving, you know, <laughs> children and et cetera. Right. It's, you know, all there's so much that needs to be done working with you know, youth with suicide, because years ago I was brought out to uh, to Wind River. It's one of my favorite places. I was brought out there to work with high school students mm -hmm. uh, because they, they had such a high rate. They were going almost one a day to suicide. And so I, I went out and spent a few weeks with them writing poetry. Mm -hmm. And um, so when this, uh, when I it was, so it was when I was announced, I had all these ideas. I still have a lot of, a lot of ideas and notions of projects, but there's, there's a capacity. <laughs> and right. uh, 
I love maps. And so during my orientation with the Library of Congress, I wanted to go see all of these different departments. And one of the first ones I wanted to see was, of course, geography and maps. And they gave, showed me what they had, and it was really exciting. And so when, with this project, I started thinking, like, like the introduction said, is like, what, you know, you could map the country with our poems. And of course, my first idea was, we'll put every native poet from now and time immemorial on a map. And it would be really cool if the map is holographic, you know, and we could do it in generational layers. So this is what I was proposing. And, and then we would show all the connections, you know, how people connect. And then we would include all American poets because we have poetry relatives, you know, sisters, cousins, and so on with American poets. And then we have poetry ancestors like Walt Whitman, et cetera. And so that was my concept for the map. And of course, then the, the, uh, influences would go all over the world and it's like wait a minute there was one guy there in geography and maps that i saw you know maybe two but i saw one person and then um three people in the literature and poetry office who have other so we wound up with um 57 uh, 47 native poets contemporary native poets and i like to think a beginning of a map or an idea kind of a pilot that might uh, spark someone else to really finish it, to make a make that kind of map. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that was the original idea. So now we have this map, and I lo I picked out a map that had no political boundaries. There were mm -hmm. no English names or native, because a lot of the rivers and mountains are also na native names and place names, but all the political boundaries were gone. Mm -hmm. There's no boundary between Mexico and the U.S., no boundary between Canada and the U.S. in the map, in the digital map that the anthology comes from. And, wow. and it's interactive. So anybody who with an Internet connection uh, where it's not too windy, <laughs> you know, can click on and the poet's image comes up. You hear their voice speaking and it's about place and you hear the poem. It's so cool to see this map and in the voice, because isn't that where our voices come from anyway? Right. We, you know, we, we are essentially the earth. Right. Yes. And um, Joy, can you remind me or for the people who are watching where we can find that? Is that Library of Congress? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I should have that address up and ready so I could put it in the chat. But um, yes, it's on the Library of Congress site. I'm sure if you pull up Library of Congress, Joy Harjo, mapping or living nations living words It'll, it will come up it's easy to access yes i appreciate what you said about maps and i uh the idea of not having boundary i mean i think that what i i'm hearing from you is is a very different way of understanding mapping right mm -hmm. uh without the borders without um, what we understand, let's say a very settler colonial sort of mindset towards land, towards uh, mapping and understanding geography. And you, and you see, I see that mirrored also in living nations, living words in the anthology in the sense that you have it, even the way it's sectioned out, it begins with help me out east, Mm -hmm. a section titled east as beginnings but it's not about uh it's not about um poets who live strictly in the east it is right. about the idea of um newness of beginning of sunrise and so on right and so within that space you included poems and poets who sort of um you know, who sort of are a part of that celebration of the new light, the Eastern light, right? The East, which I thought is so beautiful. And, and likewise, you have the center, right? Am mm -hmm. I under, remembering it correctly? The center, which is North and north South. And south. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That alignment, that grounding, that center, that center line that we all have, this place of, of where we are, mm -hmm a kind of presence, you would say. And mm -hmm. then you have West as a place of departure, which 
I mean, it was fascinating and you made it very clear that this is not about, uh, you know, the directional mapping of, of where poets reside, let's say, or where they were, they come from. And, I, and so I just appreciated that sensibility. It's a very different sensibility, I think, than the ways in which maybe other anthologies would be. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I started I yeah. I started wondering if I was not when I was re-looking no. at this thinking, oh man, I it's so poetic. But as you were talking, I thought I hadn't thought of this before either. There's an axis. So you have uh, yeah. a vertical axis and then you have a horizontal axis, which right. becomes like it's a major design symbol throughout indigenous country around which the sun, you know, the, the four directions. Um it, it's it's uh, it becomes um, almost like the key, That's you know, right. the key to the mapping. And one thing, but I wasn't I did, wasn't able to put this in there. But I love how one of the earliest Babylonian maps, uh, the regions are described. There's metaphor, just like there's in our origin. You know, the complaint I've heard from Hawaiian language people, Navajo language people, and I used to work in a Navajo language office run by Gloria Emerson at one point oh. in Albuquerque. I used to know Navajo pretty well. I don't anymore. And then the Muscogee language people is that we've lost metaphor, you know, in our expression. So I love how metaphor was incorporated in the descriptions on this one of the oldest maps in existence, the Babylonian map, the cuneiform tablet map. And what, like one region is described as the winged bird ends not his flight. And another, isn't that cool? And another is the light is brighter than that of sunset or stars, or where a horned bull lives and attacks the newcomer. Uh -huh. It's sort of like those winter count things, those winter count. Yeah, absolutely. Another kind of mapping, only it's with images, you know, which is these are images here. That's right. I mean, it makes me think, I mean, this is going off topic <laughs> from okay. the anthology, but um, I have um, had the opportunity to study recently with um, some people in our community about Lakota star knowledge. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean it, and because uh, there's four of us, four artists, we're working on a project together, Lakota artists. And so some of the um, culture bearers in our community have been um, working with us and sharing some of that old, old knowledge, old star knowledge with us and so on. So that's been a real privilege, but it's because we have these old maps, these yeah. beautiful old, old star maps, you know? I mean, our people were scientists really, and they, and, and astronomers and, they knew the sky, they knew our land. And one of the most beautiful things um, that I have taken from it is this idea that uh, in the, um, we have a symbol, have you seen this symbol? It's like two triangles mm -hmm. up yes. uh, on top and below. Uh -huh. And so in our philosophy, it is an understanding that what is above is the same as below, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and that there's so many ways to understand that, even in terms of, let's say, um, for sp every spiritual truth, there is a physical um, manifestation of that. But even in literal terms, um, we have star maps uh, that where you look down on the Black Hills, and you see it reflected in the star map. I mean, it's incredible, these sites on the land that reflect the, the stars. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I mean, that, that kind of, it's a different kind of mapping mm -hmm. and a different kind of understanding of place and origin and relationship. It's like multi-directional, like you were yeah. saying, it's up, down <laughs> like there's the these yeah. axes right that are here we are look at us talking about maps <laughs> what happened anyway <laughs> well, that's i mean that's that is i mean that's the part of the impetus is how do you come to see it 
what do we offer too in the way of i mean if you're going to talk about place in the western hemisphere you go to native people for the roots yeah and Absolutely. you know and we didn't impose maps it's not the mapping isn't imposed right on a landscape or a starscape, there's the above, there's below, there's a mirroring and we're placed mirroring. within it. We don't rule it or we're not, we're, we're part of a larger system. And that's, I think that's what I was somewhat trying to get across with the way this was like, you know, the organization yeah. of the anthology. Yeah, beautiful. I also, you know, um, going back to that initial paragraph that I read, and thinking back to when you were first appointed uh, as poet laureate, I remember reading um, like articles um, about the announcement and your appointment and so on. And then I, I saw it again in this in your introduction here. It, you have talked about this desire to humanize native people um, in the public mind. And I just felt like, and the way that you language it, the way that you say it, it's like, no, there's no pretense. You just say it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a kind of courage and a power in that, that I is so refreshing for, to me. And I shouldn't say just refreshing, but I think also it's like, I think it's uh, maybe a mentor, and at this stage, at this point, a leader in our community, it's like, it, it feels so good, you know, it's like, oh, look at, you know, Joy, as one of our, um, our, you know, I see you as a mentor in many ways, you know, and being able to um, exemplify that kind of strength, that voice, you, you have put aside, you're not worried about hurting the American psyche. <laughs> No, you're just gonna say it well, we're, uh, we're part yeah. of the american psyche i mean we're the root <laughs> of it it's it just is common sense I, yeah. I feel like i always come back to common sense you know there's common sense to structures they're like the structure of the you know the perpendicular the perpendicular and the axis and so right. on and uh but, you know, regarding that being a human and thinking about, I mean, it's, that's also common sense, you know, of course, we're human beings, but yeah. what happens with laws and ways of thoughts that are, have an intent, an evil intent to, um, for theft or other reasons, you know, that's when things get nastily, nastily complicated. But when I was starting out first as a, a painter, I was as a student at the University of New Mexico and very involved with native rights movements as part of the Kiva Club with Marley Shabala, Larry Emerson, all those guys, mm -hmm. um, mostly Navajo and uh, Pueblo people and some Apache, uh, because our, our our native university native student club became you know a center of active of action of, of uh, human rights. I thought. You know, if I do nothing else, and then I started writing poetry out of that, I thought if I do nothing else, I want, at the end of my life, I want us to be seen as human beings, mm -hmm. you know, as, as people who write, or, you know, write poetry, we have histories of poetry and canonical texts within language, within our languages, and, and we, we, we can, we stand next to you. Right. And, but if you look with the lens of you know, West, a Western European lens, and that's very general, of course, because it's also very particular there too, is we, you, of course, you're not going to see us. You won't see anybody else. And um, we have to get to a point where, you know, the eyes are all, you know, everyone, everyone yeah. has a presence because that's the nature of the world we're in. That's the nature of culture. I remember the first time I went to India, and I, I was I remember standing in the street and there's newspapers in different languages and different languages going on. And I was just, and I was thinking, I almost cried, stood there with tears and thought, this was, Amer this is America. Mm -hmm. This is America if there had been respect. If there was respect, you know, all these native, all these different newspapers all of this diversity, living diversity, which we are, but it's been so suppressed because of, a, um, you know, a genocidal component to the institution 
of a of a government that at heart at its root you know was for was for democratic society mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so then i take my tools which now are poetry and music and and just do my own little thing <laughs> you know in my own corner you know how we artists work we're we're here but a lot of what we do is what they would call the imaginary imaginary realm but that realm is without time and it's it's much larger and more complex and there's more room for travel and insight than the mental realm yeah i mean that's so funny you would m mention that there's so many things you just said that i would love to maybe um talk about further but on this last note about the imaginary the the imagination or that realm you know i was just talking about this um at another event recently, but just the idea that really it's the unseen. Mm -hmm. As artists, we are relying on the unseen. It yeah. is, uh, you know, just as much as, I mean, that is why I often consider it a place of prayer. And mm -hmm. I know maybe some of my friends are like, oh, Laylee, why do you have to go there? <laughs> <laughs> why do you have to get all spiritual on us? Okay. But <laughs> Well, everything but, uh, is ultimately spiritual. Yes. What's that? Everything is ultimately spiritual. Well, ultimately spiritual, and it's also to understand that there are different understandings mm -hmm. of what it is to be in that realm or a spiritual realm. Yes. And this is what I call the unseen. Mm -hmm. You know, like we, re you know, we even to say that we believe in the imagination. What proof do I have, really, that imagination exists? It's, it's, it's an idea. And I sit down and I say, I'm going to enter into this place mm -hmm. and I'm going to rely on my imagination, right? That, that, there's a kind of belief. Mm -hmm. There's a belief there as an artist. Right. That it exists and it's a power and it's a place. And I would say an energy and maybe the, in some ways that goes... Uh, you know, I don't want to get too, too out there right now, but, you know, in, even in our language, in Lakota language, if you go back, back, back to the root, and I've actually uh, heard language teachers talking about this, mm -hmm. that through contact, through settler contact and um, Christianity influence mm -hmm. and so on, uh, somehow our idea of creator has become a singular kind of being. Mm -hmm. But if you go back to uh, the origins, like our language and the way that we refer to, quote, creator, mm -hmm. is really at the, the, the center of that idea is just energy. Mm -hmm. It's energy. That was our understanding, that it is a kind of energy that can give life or take life. It's the ultimate energy. And so I think really as artists, that's also what we're tapping into. If you wanna call that spiritual, if you wanna call that whatever, it is that place of creating, creation, that ener energetic space. And Look at me here. just going off. And it's here, no, that's cool because it's here. I mean, can you see love? Can you right. see fury? Can you see, uh, you see evidence? Right. You can see evidence of creation in our arts. Right. I mean, that's where, you know, that's where it finds expression or any, any, I mean, think about a, a, a mathematical equation, same thing. You're not, you're dealing again in those realms. Right. You know, you can take your science, any version, you're still dealing within those realms, even though you may say they don't exist <laughs> or try to use it's an equation to say they don't exist. Well, maybe there is a realm of not, not, they do not exist, you know, yeah. you know, which is a realm and, and a use of that energy. And so if you look at the energy, then it's rhythm. Right. That's at the heart. Oh, yeah. I had not thought about that. Yeah. Oh and God. it has everything to do, it has everything to do with living nations, living words and anthology. It is because wow. you read the poem, you know, it's about, 
everyone, you know, wherever they place themselves, I mean, the map is different. We had to organize the book as a book. So it's a different kind of creature, you know, uh, a uh -huh. different kind yeah. of, but um, those are kind of underlying, net, not always spoken of principles that are very similar. The words might be different, but it's very similar in Muscogee people. The idea of fixture or spirit, you know, where it's it's that kind of, and 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 every one of them, like in Hawaii, it's aloha. In our language, it's anugetchka. Is that that that's the spirit that feeds community, which mm -hmm. is a kind of compassion or a love. Right. Yes. So, you know, on that note, too, I I read this beautiful quote. Something you said. Hold on, I'm gonna find it. <laughs> because it has to do with love and it has to do with ancestors and community and that is what i find you always even look at us how how our our conversation now just now went all over and it always comes back to love and ancestors which i think knowing you all this time all these years now, um, I find that to be <laughs> the consistent <laughs> return. But this beautiful quote, you said, just a second. Um, let me see if I can find it here. They're adamant. <laughs> They're very <laughs> adamant. Uh, you said, I feel strongly, this is in the New Yorker. I, I read this the other day. I feel strongly that I have a responsibility to all the sources that I am, to all past and future ancestors, to my home country, to all places that I touch down on and that are myself, to all voices, all women, all of my tribe, all people, all earth, and beyond that, to all beginnings and endings in a strange kind of sense, writing frees me to believe in myself, to be able to speak, to have voice, because I have to, it is my survival. I wrote that when I was very young. Oh. Um, it was, they gave it to me. I mean, it's like a lot of the writings and I think for all of us, it's teachings, I mean, we all i think every artist has that it's like whoa you start following the yeah. rhythm you follow the rhythm the energy the rhythm and the shape and geomet geometrics and the triangles you know all of that and um and so you listen as a poet you're listening especially if you're dealing with poetry or music and i realize that th they were t telling me so it's like they're telling me you you know this is you know it's saying i but it's them saying i and they're teaching me this is okay you gotta this is what you're here to do kind of a little map in its in and of itself a little map about um because i would get mad why don't i have a map to show me the direction you know where i'm supposed to go or what's supposed to happen and there's moments where you can see little bits of the map but generally um oh, where was i going to go with that it's you get it comes out this way, these little markers. Mm. But I was young. I was trying to remember when I wrote that. And I don't know what it's doing in the New Yorker. <laughs> well, that's fantastic, actually. It's so uh, revealing to see or to hear that you said that when you were quite young. Because what I see is that it had it, it created sort of, um, I would say a you can see how you've had a kind of trajectory mm -hmm. or a lifelong commitment in that regard. Uh, so it was something that you thought about and you were aware of as a young poet, as a young artist, and, and you remain you steadfast to that, you remained committed to it, which I think is interesting. I've actually been talking to um, some of my students about this idea um this idea of making a commitment to your art like a creating a relationship with your art a relationship with your poetry um and so and in other words like almost seeing your work as its own being 
and you say to that work uh, that you create certain agreements, if that makes sense. <laughs> Hi, Joy. Hi. <laughs> so cute. You know, so we, can we go on this way and they can see if you hold the phone up? Yes. We can. And then we can finish this way. And what we can say is, you know, this is another way we're using the tools to, uh, it's sort of like mapping in a way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have to be. Uh, you know, in, you know, in, in a moving and a society that's always changing, mm -hmm. um, we use we use the tools that we have for storytelling and for yeah, trying exactly. to get the narrative going. And uh, so here we are with uh, there I am right next to one of the stars on your wall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is um, this is one way to do it. Yes. You know? That sounds great. The poems are in the in the anthology. You can look at any of those poems in the anthology, and and see how each of them, each poem actually, each poem is a kind of map. I've been thinking about that lately too. How each poem is a map. It's a construction, and you have like the title is this. Okay, this is where we are. Maybe this is where we're going, or this is this is the area. And then you go line by line and you're moving into a certain territory that is set up by the construction of the poem, the shape, the rhythms, um, but the poem, the content. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry, Joy, I'm just so distracted, but in a good way, the fact that we got you on the phone <laughs> to wrap up this uh, beautiful conversation. Um, I wanted to say thank you, Joy. Thank you for being here. Thank you to Chicago Humanities Festival for arranging this conversation and to everyone watching for being so patient with our technical difficulties. Um, but this is the time we're living in, the Zoom time. And as, <laughs> and as Joy said, we know, in a way, it's like it's beyond boundaries or borders or what have you. We just use any way we can to get together and share in the poetry community. So I feel very fortunate. Thank you, Joy, for calling us and uh, <laughs> trying to make this work. Well, thank you, too. Thanks for hanging in there with me. We were dealing with the wind and, and you know, the wind is more powerful. <laughs> the wind is uh, calling a halt to my internet here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the, the uh, part of the Muskogee Creek Nation Reservation. Wow. So the wind, is, the wind is speaking, the wind is having a voice here. Yeah. The wind is sort of like asserting its um, presence today, right? <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Well, beautiful. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, everyone. It's Chicago Humanities Festival. And thank you to everyone watching. Uh, and it was such a privilege to be with you, Joy. Um, and I, I'm um, sending all my very best wishes for this beautiful anthology, Living Nations, Living Words. And it will be uh, published. It comes out, is it in May? Is that May 4th. May, yes, 4th. May 4th. Okay. Uh -huh. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. To be continued. To be continued. <laughs> exactly. As they say in our language, doksha, later. <laughs> okay. 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 Take care. Thank you, Thank Chicago. You. Uh huh. Okay. Bye bye. Bye.